growing up just just over the hill over here and we did everything the hard way it seemed like and we milked cows and we had some beef cows and we had goats and sheep and a little bit of everything. It seemed like we we didn't have all this mechanized stuff and and conveyor belts and things like that. Uh, you used horses. We used horses. I I came along about the time they started switching over from horses to tractors. I was seven years old when my dad bought it, an H farm all tractor. Wow, what year was that? Uh, 35 plus seven? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they got electricity. Wow. That's when he was seven. Was, we had two great things that happened is we got a tractor and we got electricity. And up to that time we had no refrigeration. We had uh, about 300 Three hundred yards from the house was a nice cold spring that came out from under the hill. Oh, nice! And that's where we kept the milk and the butter. We put rocks all around it, and, and uh, so that was your ice box. Yeah, yeah. Before every meal, one of us kids, and a lot of times it was me, seemed like he ran faster. <laughs> Uh, had to run down to the creek and get the milk and the butter. You weren't worried about anybody taking it? No, no. The only the only people that ever came by was somebody that might be working for us or mostly we didn't hire that much help. So mostly it was all family. And in fact, my granddad put together, uh, I have heard about 1,200 acres here that, that he owned and that went, and then he started losing his eyesight. Oh dear. And so it got to the point that he went totally blind, but he deeded off a hundred, every time one of his kids got married, and he had six kids, five boys and a girl, and he would, so we ended up with all of us right here together. Well. I had uncles and, and cousins and, you know, all over the place. And and most of them had five or six kids, you know, so I had lots of cousins. Too. The the house that you, was up on the hill here that you no. were born in? You got to go down past the stone house and take a right. Uh-huh. And it's, oh, what, an eighth or half, a quarter of a mile. Half a mile down. Is it, down there. is it still owned by the family? No, no, no. No, it's that. It's owned by the Masters been, Boys Ranch. Been sold oh, sure. Except 40 acres right on this that faces the road. Sure, way. sure. Yeah. You were born at home then? Yeah. Yeah. And when did y'all move out of the house that you were born in? We, we didn't move out as, as long as I was growing up. You were there. I, I lived there and, until I graduated from couch. Okay. But, uh, and so you told me that you met Mary uh, in Denver? Yeah. And, and how long after you met Mary did it take you to realize that she was the one? Uh, <laughs> not, not very long. A month. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Was it, did it have a lot to do with her red convertible? And no, the boys. Not, and her boys. With, with the boys it might have. It didn't, uh, wasn't anything I could could haul tools in. So. <laughs> <laughs> a true farmer. <laughs> so he had all his tools and sure all his stuff, but he had had total custody of his three boys when I met him. So if I wanted to, see, I mean, he took them to work with him a lot. Oh in wow! Because he'd work two or three jobs, two or three different jobs. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to see him, a lot of times I just had to go find him uh, <laughs> in all this new work, call a shop, find out where he was at, go out and... Uh, it's called de dedication. Find him on the job and then I got learned how to help him with his Good. work and hand him tools and all that sort of stuff. So and Take care of the boys while they're there too well, and everything. If 
I, I met a, a guy and he needed somebody to do countertops and, and floors and that's what I specialized in. And uh, so I did a lot of night work for him. And when, if she was not available to, to go with me out to do that or it didn't work out that way, well, I'd take the boys with me a lot of times and, and around a building site on new houses, there's always a sand pile somewhere they sure. can play in. Oh, that's fun for and, the kids. And this guy that I worked for was good to have a cooler full of snacks. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, y'all had fun then. I would take blankets along and put them to bed in the back of the truck or the cab of the truck, and and take them home and carry them in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I hired a babysitter occasionally before I came along. Well, I just did what I had to do. No, that's exactly right. So tell me about your grandfather and his peg leg. Yeah, he, he they were coon hunting the way I remember the story. Uh, he and his, I guess his kids, and they, they cut down a tree and to get to this coon, and the tree fell on his leg, and he says, "Don't worry about me, get the coon." And so they they did, but I don't know if it would have made a difference in this losing his leg or not, but, you know, we're at that time a long ways from a hospital or a doctor, so, you know, there was no flight for life. And <clears throat> so he probably didn't go to the doctor till the next day. So they made this, I've got pictures of it in here, but it... Well, it's it, like you it's see of the old Navy leg. guys with peg, wooden peg leg. They just strap it on with leather straps and it's... The thing I remember about him that, that I never did forget was, and, and we were putting out tomato plants in the garden the day he stopped there, and somebody had to go along with a, a, a rake or something and punch holes, to, and then somebody put the plant in. We had all the, Every kid had a job to do, and somebody carried a bucket of water with a dipper and put some water on it. And he went along and punched the holes with his big leg. <laughs> How funny! And I, I remember that. Uh, tell me about Myrtle when you were growing up, the town of Myrtle. It was a busy place. Was it? It was real busy. And you had how many service stations? Oh, they had, at one point, they had five... You're kidding! ...service stations. Now, that don't sound possible, but it's true. They did. A general store, a movie theater. They had two, two stores, two grocery stores, uh, for some period of time. That's amazing! And... Yeah, it, it really is. They had a... A blacksmith shop, I remember that. Yeah. And, and yeah, because everything's wagons and horses, and it, on a Saturday, when everybody came to town to buy supplies, it it'd be crowded, and and there were just beginning to be automobiles, and automobiles and horses didn't mix real well, and sometimes they'd have runaway teams, you know, <laughs> that, was, that happened every once in a while. Oh my goodness. And, uh, one time in the field down in front of our house, we they were cutting hay and my brother, my oldest brother, was using this rake that's sitting down there, the dump rake, and he went through a hornet's nest. A hornet or a yellow jacket, one or the other, and and they started stinging the horses, and so the horses ran away, and they they ran through the fence and down the bank and into the lane, going down to the spring, and as they went over the bank, my brother jumped off the back, and, and the horses run down to the spring, crossed the creek, and started up the hill, but they got hung up on a tree. Yeah. 
so yikes you know you know my my favorite thing to do when we got the milking done if it was still light enough is to run out in the woods and go squirrel hunting and and I would kill two squirrels and then start back home and if I killed another squirrel that's good if I didn't two squirrels would make a meal so we ate a lot of squirrel and rabbits there were lots of rabbits he ran a trap line and I had a trap line down on the creek mm -hmm. which had, creek mill creek uh, no Mill, Mill Creek is this one down here. Right. And we were on Bee Fork, and Bee Fork runs into Mill Creek. Okay. Down here. Okay. And, and that uh, ran through the whole length of our, our farm. But he had to get up before milk time but to go I, check the traps? To go set his traps. Oh, to M go M set them. Milk time was 4 o'clock in the morning. And <clears throat> my dad would. He always built a fire, so we didn't have to get up and build a fire like a lot of kids did. But we slept, and the stove was in the other room, and my brother and I, Thurman, we slept in, in, the, in the room that didn't have a stove. So that linoleum was really cold when, when we had to get up in the morning and be out there. And my dad would, would uh, Open the door and he says, Malcolm time is going on five o'clock. And it would be two minutes after four. After four, and, and he'd say, It's going on five going o'clock. Going on to five o'clock. <clears throat> but we knew we'd better get up and get there pretty quick, or we'd wish we hadn't. Uh, yeah. So, and then when I run my trap lines, I had to do that before Malcolm time. So I had to get up about three o'clock in order to run down and run all my trap lines, and then if I caught a a, a possum, or a I didn't have, you know, the next thing after milking was breakfast, and then you're ready to go catch a bus to school um, to, to skin the possum out. So I kept a tub on a piece of concrete slab on the back porch, uh, back behind the house. And I would throw him under that tub and put a concrete block on the tub. And then when I got home from school, I'd take care of him. Yeah, you know. yeah. But he also trapped skunks. Well, yeah, I got skunks. Bring skunks to the house. Well, I had to skin them and stretch the hide on the board. Oh, okay. You know, and all that. And you sold those? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The school bus would stop up in front of the store. Uh -huh. Kids got on. He'd run off, sell his hides, and get back on the school bus. Well, mostly, mostly I, I saved the hides because the hides will keep for a long time, and they sure. need to, to cure dry it. out, cure out before they want to buy them. Yeah. So I keep them. But the rabbits that I caught, we were almost at the end of the line on the bus route. So I would take my rabbits with me. We had to walk a half mile over to the to the bus, catch the bus, and and I would get on a bus with them, and then when we got to Myrtle, I'd jump off and run across the street to Oliver Wilkerson's store, and and he bought rabbits and hides, and so I'd sell them, and I got twenty five cents a piece. So then I had. I had money. <laughs> well, and then he helped his dad hay. His dad, well, I mean, you say contracted, he hay, cut hay for other farmers and sure. bailed it. Using the implements I took pictures of out there. Yeah. 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 And as kids <clears throat> that were tractor drivers, mainly after we got tractors, and they paid us 25 cents. Wow. Had a, a customer to work for, uh, to grind something for, and my dad sent Uncle Earl downstairs to turn on the 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 the, the mill, and he got his jacket hung in the belt. <gasps> and he was. 
throwing them all over, all over down there. And, and, somebody, and so my dad had to run down there to throw the switch and the customer thought he would throw the switch so they were fighting over who's, which way the switch was going to go while, while uh, Uncle Earl was being swung around down there. How scary. Yeah, that was kind of a scary thing. But and they it, were big old long belts. I, I didn't, I never see that building. We were working down on the river close to Mary June's place. And at that time that was Mr. Hyde's place. But we were, we'd been threshing it down there and it was, we were heading home as the end of the day. And Jackie had a, a, a it was driving a small tractor that he used these small tractors to haul hay and stuff with. He left just a little bit ahead of me and I, I was trying to catch up with him because everything was a contest to see whatever, whatever you're driving, what's the fastest. Because you know. that's how you have fun. Yeah. <laughs> that was part of the fun then. And we got to the, the hill where Susie used to live down there. Hill. And at the bottom of that hill is, is where you now hit the pavement, but back then there was no pavement. So when I got to the top of that hill, I just kicked my tractor in neutral and I was going to make some, make up some time. You had a wagon behind yours, didn't you? And I had a wagon, empty wagon, but uh, the pen, which is just an old bolt that we'd stick in the tongue to hook the wagon to the tractor. Sure. And that bounced out and the, the wagon ran in, <clears throat> into the wheels on the back of the tractor and hit the seat that I'm sitting on. No! So it, it puts me out. I'm still holding the wheel, but my feet are higher than my head. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, But when I come back down, I didn't come back down on the seat. I missed the seat and I'm sitting on the axle <gasps> of, of the trailer. <laughs> And between the fender and the and the and the seat, but I I I never turned loose of it, and I kept it in the road. But I had to slow down. I was I was going too fast. Oh my word! And I was already on the wrong side of the road, so I decided to take the left hand turn where the fork was. Yeah, was. yeah. And and I I negotiated that and managed to do that without rolling the tractor over. But the wagon went straight across the, the Y and stuck the tongue in the ditch and it jumped the fence and ended up out in the field to get <gasps> the tongue out of the wagon. So it didn't, didn't hurt the tractor, but uh, it was my brother's tractor. <laughs> Holy cow.